I want to move on to the to the uh, food price report. You recently posted around getting some academic. I, I wanted to talk about two things. One, some academic recognition for the report, and then two, how's it going? Because I think you guys start now ish. Like it's a long run uh, production cycle. So talk about uh, talk about that. Yeah, no. So f- first of all, <laughs> like often you get rec- some recognition by applying for awards. You know, mm. you just apply and then you get uh, sure. a note of yeah. some sort. This came out of nowhere. We had no idea. I honestly, Michael, I didn't even know the this these prizes actually existed. <laughs> Uh, it's called Gourmand uh, International. It's mm. uh, it's actually headed by the Alfred Nobel Museum in oh. uh, Sweden, and uh, so we were notified last week that the uh, that Canada's Food Price Report, eleventh edition, twenty twenty one, was uh, shortlisted under the category University Press because they have tons of categories. Uh, so we we are shortlisted to represent Canada. Great. Uh, for for these awards, uh, and I think we should know uh, whether or not we uh, win. Uh, I think it's January, or February of 2022, but I'm not oh. sure. But we were very pleased to get the note, and yeah. I did notify our partners, the University of Guelph, Saskatchewan, and UBC, and uh, we're all thrilled. So this is great. Uh, it's a, it's a as you know, Michael. This is a. Uh, a multi-institutional uh, collaboration uh, yeah. project that requires a lot of work, a lot of coordination. So, and we're working on our 12th edition already. Uh, yeah. And we have a new partner, which is Nielsen IQ. Nielsen yeah. IQ will actually provide us with, with the data, the actual data coming from grocers, mm. telling us exactly what, uh, what's been going on with food inflation. Uh, we're not, the numbers coming out of StatsCan aren't necessarily trustworthy. We, we Mm. do feel that some of the numbers are, are not accurate, uh, which is why we, we, we prefer to rely on, on numbers coming out of Nelson IQ. So we're very pleased Mm. to, to, um, to get the support from a really great organization, Nelson IQ. And frankly, I mean, some of the data that they have is unaffordable for most, so we're mm. very, we feel very lucky and fortunate to to have to to work with Nielsen IQ for for this year moving forward. How do you account for in this report? And it, uh, maybe it's just too difficult. You've you've called it shrinkflation. You know, in other words, yeah. um, You know, where brands they put out the same product, they keep the price at the same price point, but they make the product a little smaller. Um, yeah. And and that's not it's not, that's nothing new. Uh, and it is a way for brands to kind of keep their price point and, and keep things um, at what price they feel it needs to be. But it is in an inverted way inflation, right? You're getting less for your money than you did the day before. And do you factor that into the report or is that something that's... Um, uh, that's well, goal? actually, Nelson IQ does, uh, uh, but hmm. not necessarily stats can because they, they, we, we've, we've never been able to get real clear answers from stats canon when it comes Mm. to how they actually collect data they'll send you a document telling you what the methodology is and how many data collectors they have and but they don't necessarily tell you what brands they look at and Mm. when they look at them how the data is collected do they just make a phone call to grocers do they actually show up at the grocery store under which Mm. banner there there's, there's there's a lot of unknowns that really made us uh, feel uncomfortable, but with Nelson IQ we get more transparency. But hmm. the issue of shrinkflation, uh, and as you as you mentioned, has been around for for many decades. Sure. But 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 strategies have evolved, though. I don't know hmm. if you've noticed, but back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, whenever whenever commodity prices go up, that's when you start seeing more shrinkflation sure. cases because sure. costs for manufacturers do go up, and they don't want to spook their clients, which is yep. Uh, Fine. I mean, it's really, that's how it is. Um, in 2008, 2009, it was really about uh, lowering quantities per unit, I mm. guess, over several months. What we're seeing now, there's still some of that going on, but what we're seeing now is that uh, companies will actually shrink uh, bite sizes 
Hmm. They'll keep the same quantity and six months, a year later, they'll actually reduce the number of units inside a box yeah. or a package. So for example, if you uh, manufacture cookies, you may actually shrink uh, the size of a cookie. You'll still keep the 300 grams or so per package, but a year or two from now, you, you're basically training the market to mm. accept a smaller cookie, a smaller mm. bite size, which mm. will eventually lead to shrinkflation. And so I, I think companies are getting smarter uh, with, with shrinkflation. I actually, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not upset about shrinkflation at all. I, there's nothing wrong with it. It's no. just, and it actually leads, I think it leads people to w waste less, to be honest. You know, yeah. we're buying too much food anyways. And so it's kind of, the 90s and, the two, and early 2000s in reverse, we were getting too much for our money. And now we're, mm. cap packages are, are shrinking mm. and people are getting upset by, by, by shrinkflation. But with, with shrinkflation, I, I don't really see an issue with that at all. <laughs> right. I guess, I guess it, it, it's interesting how it factors in and, and what you say about, uh, you know, notwithstanding what you say about the stats can data, your report has been relentlessly accurate. Um, yes. you know, the models behind it seem to take ingest data and do the magic. So it'll be super interesting to see what happens with the Nielsen data. I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing how that gets ingested and, and what changes come out. And I'm not surprised somebody in Stockholm would have heard about the report. You had so much publicity <laughs> for it. You know, what'd you say? Like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of impressions around the world. So, uh, well, the, the, yeah, the market reach for the report every given year it reaches uh, about 100 million uh, wow. people which wow. is uh, which is a lot so yeah so and and i suspect that this year won't be an exception uh, where we actually give interviews about food prices all year round mm. this year was particularly has been particularly busy yeah. uh, a lot of people are concerned and 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 prices are going up and yeah. and the one thing i i, I try to explain to people about <laughs> food inflation is that it's not it's not necessarily a game of averages when we say five percent some people may say well five percent who cares it's not that much well mm. it's it's not it's not about averages five percent is the average but if you're if you're if you go to the meat counter and you're a fan of sterling steak or something it's not you're not going to see five percent you're going to see 12 or 13 or 15 percent Right. And peanut butter has gone up this year too. So <laughs> that's, that's going to upset a lot of people for the first time in 20 years. So you can see that really COVID and yeah. macroeconomic factors as have impacted the entire grocery store. So there's no safe place for, for consumers right now. Well, there's a great headline in the New York times today, uh, cause the U S economy is on fire, you know, growth beyond, but uh, there's inflation creeping in. Um, now, some of that inflation is creeping in because people are actually going back and traveling in hotel rooms. I was looking at some yep. of the analysis and, you know, a hotel room in New York was 150 bucks. Well, now it's back up to 400 more normal rates. So that factors into inflation, right? The people are doing their more normal lives. But they said, is the economy on fire good? And is there inflation? The answer to both is yes. So we're going to go through this kind of recovery. It's going to be choppy. I think it feels, unfortunately, a little more choppy in the U.S., Southern U.S. is really struggling, my, you know. My biggest concern, Michael, mm. is uh, is labor. I mean, uh, hard to find, uh, expensive. My wife and yeah. I just booked a hotel room in Quebec City uh, last week, mm. uh, and prices were very were very similar to uh, to uh, the pre COVID era. But when we actually arrive at the hotel, so we said. We wanted to rent a, a nice room in a nice hotel in Quebec, but it was sold out. And when I said to the to to the person, well, I we wanted to stay at the other hotel, but it was sold out. And he said, well, it wasn't sold out. It's just they block 70% of all rooms because they don't have anybody it. to clean them. Well, I, I'm having similar issues. I, we're As a family, we're off to Banff. Enjoy the great, we've never been to Banff in Alberta, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, For your birthday. Uh, birthday and wedding anniversary, my wife's birthday. Yeah. It's like the trifecta of activities uh, in the middle of August. Very strategic. Very strategic. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny how it came together. Actually, like on our first date. When sure, are you, sure. When, it's when are not you... by design. <laughs> <laughs> when were you born? So let's just make anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, make it a package. Let's, a let's, life package. let's get married in the middle of it, and then we'll you know that'll just make it very you know highly productive. 
it's all but, about convenience and economies of scale, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years later. Yeah. Um, but they're having the same issue. And their biggest issue, I, I spoke to a couple of restaurants as I'm making reservations, was they don't have the foreign students who would typically flood into Canada to spend their summer working in Banff, right? They're not allowed in to the country. Yeah. Um, so they've, they're really short. So I, you know, I was talking to our family last night, he said, you know, we pack, we always pack a lot of patients when we're over at all times, but we pack double patients because it's going to be it's going to be really slow. 